thanks everybody. Uh, I'll present uh, about the GeoDevil work. That's work that we've done in the geoscience community in Devil. That was uh, the umbrella organization there is Oscope, that's the Empress facility in geoscience in Australia. The funding, as we all know, comes from NRDC Nectar, now ARDC as I understand it. And the partners in that particular project were, uh, apart from Oscope and ENDS, were NCI, uh, the University of Adelaide, the Australian National University, and CSIRO. And I myself from CSIRO. All right. Um, I'll give a quick summary of the lots of little part projects we included in this GeoDevil activity and they've all done amazing work. So I'll give a short overview of uh, the overall accomplishments so far, and then we'll drill down in one or two particular aspects of it, which I'm most familiar with and hope are of interest to the bro uh, broader community. The first thing we've done is created a landing page for all the common services and data portals in the OSCOPE, in the geoscience space uh, that we that we look after or uh, feel affiliated with. So that's a new page available through the OSCOPE website and you see all kinds of web portals listed there as well as references to analytic codes and how they are linked and I'll give a little demo of that a little bit later on. Um, that uh, was developed in, in this project. Um, I think the tech talks also uh, encourage to talk about technology, so this is in particular an Angular 6 uh, application. And the, the um, novel thing about that, or the unusual thing about this front end is that the content is not hard-coded or in a, in a database that's actually connected to a software registry that we also developed with OSCO and uh, ARDC funding over the previous couple of years. And all the codes that and portals that are listed there are dynamically retrieved from that service. And if people, as soon as people register new services there or new codes, it will be immediately available and listed here as well. Uh, the second uh, activity was the launch of an IGSN minting service. IGSN stands for International Geo Sample uh, Number. And the idea there is to link uh, physical samples from the world when people go out to collect rocks or uh, drill core samples to associate them with a unique number and then this number uh, can be used in references or talking about these samples and checking these samples. Um, that originated, uh, as you can imagine, in the um, GEO community, since it's called it's a GEO sample number, but it's, up, uh, it's uh, reasonably broad in its uh, in the way it works, so it can be easily extended to to any uh, physical sample that you want to uh, associate with a unique number. So we proposed that work and, and uh, saw the opportunity there and actually uh, offered to uh, roll that out as an as an end service. Uh, and they actually did that work there, which I think is fantastic. And Julia Martin and her team did, did great work there. So that is now available as an end service. So the geoscience community is the first customer through scope, And we can, geoscientists can mint samples there. But if you're interested in your community, if you have physical samples and you're interested <coughs> to use that listing service, please talk to ANS or ARDC uh, about that service and how you can join that. Um, next activity is the OSPAS portal that was developed by a new uh, with OSCOPE and that is a web portal for to make available passive seismic data. I think a new is hosting around 60 terabyte of the data, and this portal will make this available to, to the community. Um, the uh, virtual geophysics laboratory is an um, um, data discovery and um, analytic tool that OSCOPE operates that has been developed over the co uh, last couple of years. So this project um, funded some 
new developments there. We are porting it currently. It was a JavaScript front end with a Java back end. So we are replacing the front end with a modern Angular front end and adding some new features uh, within that project. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit more further on as well. Um, in addition to these developments, NCI did a great work to add actual data sets to make them available to the community. So they added about more, something around 3,000 geophysics data sets uh, to their repository, and they're available through the OSCO portal or the geoscience uh, laboratory, a geophysics laboratory. We can access this data and process the data, run analytic models on that. And NCI, in collaboration with the University of Adelaide, actually transferred about a terabyte, I think, uh, of magnetic telluric data sets to NCI, and they're available through VGL Virtual Geophysics Laboratory as well. I didn't spell out magnetic tellurics because I don't know how to spell it. It took me about six months to learn how to pronounce it. Um, but apparently, and that's a that's a great achievement. So all these data sets are now available there. In addition to that, there were some publications and presentations and outreach uh, activities. I'm not listing them all there. If you're interested, the interim report for the project lists them all, and you can have a look there. So that's a broad overview over the the activities that we're undertaking or have undertaken so far in this project. And I'll drill down into two of those a bit more, show them a bit. One is the, the front end and the Oscope virtual research environment front end. The idea there is really to make it easy for people to go to the Oscope site, see what web portals, web services are available in the Oscope community, what analytic codes are available there. So if you want to try it out yourself, you can just Go here to avre.oscope.org, and you will see this page here. And currently, there is not that much on there yet. We just released it a couple of days ago, but the idea is to grow that and eventually list everything in the community here and make it available. So what you see here is all the web portals that are currently under the Oscope umbrella. That's the Virtual Geophysics Laboratory, the Discovery Portal, we have an underworld training course based on Jupyter notebooks for the Docker environment, and the ITSN minting service that I, I mentioned before. So that gives you an overview of the web portals. If you're actually looking at specific analytic functionality, for example, there's one here called eScript Magnetic Inversion. So if you're interested in that and want to know which of these apps actually support that, you can click that there and you see if you want to run that, you can go to the Virtual Geophysics Laboratory and, um, and uh, actually use that code directly there. But, uh, there's also some more details here which show you a bit of the metadata associated with these things, but I won't go into detail there. It's all backed by the software registry that we run, but that's all in the background, so I'm not going to show that here. Peter, I don't think we have time for that. So what you can do is you can launch um, one of these services, in this case, the Geo, uh, Virtual Geophysics Laboratory, that allows you to, for example, look for data sets. Uh, these data sets are not hosted in that laboratory. That links back to uh, repositories, I think, in this case, at NCI, but they're also at uh, Geoscience Australia has repositories. You can see where they are. You can overlay them over the map. Um, so you can get a preview of these data sets. So these are gravity anomaly sets. You can zoom into there. So that's what you would expect from most data portals. Where this goes further is in the analytic capabilities that it offers. So what I can do here, if I find some data set that looks interesting and a one run analytics on that. I can select the data set and capture it. Then directly from that portal, I can create an analytics job. So I need to sign in here to actually process, uh, process the data set directly in the virtual laboratory. Uh, for that, I submit a job. Um, the data set I just captured is here. I can add, I can upload files. I can point to other web services if I need to add other data sets to that. 
The next step is connects again to the software registry, the software app store I was talking about earlier. And here we find the e-script that we were talking about, so I can select that here. Again, the virtual laboratory goes to that service. It discovers uh, what are the input parameters for that service, default values. And I can select the data set I had here. Um, we'll skip that step. And next step, all I have to do now to actually execute that code I selected on the data set I selected is to just tell the system where to run it. Uh, we support the Nectar eResearch Cloud, we support Amazon Web Services, and we support the uh, Region, which is a supercomputer at NCI. Uh, you can't see Nectar here because I logged in with my Gmail account instead of my AF account. So if you log in with AF, you can run a Nectar. But uh, if I log in, if you log in with the Google account or something like that, you, you only have the option of Amazon or, or Region. So if you wanted to run this on Amazon, I just select it here. All I need to do is uh, select what type of virtual machine or big it should be to run on. Or if I want to run this on Region, um, slightly different parameters here. Here I just need to say how many CPUs do I want. How many, how much memory in gigabyte, how much disk space, in the wall time. Um, I click next here, can review that, and then I can submit the job. So this makes it very easy for people to, to go to the virtual laboratory, but very easy to discover data sets so that was backed by petabyte or whatever of geophysics data. You can browse through there, search through there, depending uh, uh, on facets and keywords. Um, it's very easy to uh, find analytic codes to run on, very easy to provision them, so you don't need to know how to uh, use Amazon Web, uh, Amazon Cloud. You don't need to know how to start a virtual machine and look after it. You don't need to know how to use uh, HPC facility like Region, what a uh, PBS system is, and so on. That all the virtual laboratory handles all that for you in the background. It knows how to start virtual machines on Amazon. It knows how to put jobs into queue on, on region and will do that. So you only have to select what you want to do. And it goes off and does that. That might take a little bit now. You can see it progress here. It's currently in provisioning, which means it's probably somewhere in the queue. So I'll just skip to some other one. So once it's finished, you get an email. You can download the results of the job. In case the job supports that, you can get a preview image of of the results, you get log files and so on. Um, you can then start new jobs based on that, or you can download the results to process locally. Um, that's uh, just a short introduction to these two technologies. I think that's probably my 10 minutes. Are there, so thank you very much, and are there any questions? Thank you, Kasten. Um, we will leave uh, a QA after all four talks. Um, for possibly there are questions that um, can be common to all uh, demos. So 